Hey guys, welcome back to the barn. So today I wanted to do a podcast situation where I talk more about preparing for winter because it's one of those things that we all have to deal with every single year. And hopefully I can give you some advice or maybe some ideas to make the transition a little bit easier for you. But we are approaching the beginning of September, fall is in the air, the nights are getting cooler, and we have a lot to think about, especially if you have show horses, right? So this is the time of year where we actually have to think about blanketing our horses again, and it's a big decision. Do I keep a hair coat or not? And there's multiple factors behind that. It's like, okay, well, am I going to show in the winter? Am I going to show early in the year where I want to keep the hair coat? But for me, Do I want to keep a short hair coat so that when I get the horses out to work them, it's a lot easier to cool them off and they stay cooler during the ride? So there's so many variables and it's a lot of work to keep up a hair coat. I've been doing it for so long and it is, it's, it's hard. I'm out at the barn at nine o'clock at night to put blankets on because it's just too hot before then. And then I have to be out there at 8 a.m. sometimes earlier to take those blankets off. Plus it's not just the blankets it's the lighting as well so if there's so many variables with that there's the blanketing and the lighting so the lights have to be set on a timer as well so I try to do about mm, 12 to 15 hour days for them even in the winter time just so that it fools their brains into thinking it is still summer along with being warm so it is you have to have the right kind of lights in there. You can't just have like an incandescent fluorescent bulb on them. You actually have to have a certain wattage, which I believe I've always had a lot of work or excuse me, not work, but a lot of success with 300 watt, 350 sometimes. So halogens. So they've always worked very, very well for me. Then as winter keeps coming, you got to think about, oh my gosh, blankets are expensive and one blanket is never enough to keep a short hair coat on your horse. So you have to have two, sometimes three here in Colorado because it does get below zero. And you have the neck warmers and they got to worry about rubbing their manes out as well. So it is, it's a lot more work. It's a lot of maintenance, but the payoff is so, so, so much more than letting them ha- grow their hair coats out. Plus it makes them look a little bit nicer, a little bit smoother. Another thing with winter coming up, barn maintenance. So my horses have stock tanks outside and that's where they get 100% of their water. With winter coming around the corner, I'm not going to be able to do that because of the ice. So with the pasture horses every day, we're out there with like a crowbar or a stick or some sort of handle, strong handle, just banging on this ice just to break it up so the horses can get to their to their water. So of course that's when you get heater, the stock tank heater situation. So that works very well for outside horses, but with those, I don't know if you've seen them, but they're those, they're tubs. Some people use them for hauling manure out. Some non-horse people use them for holding kids toys. What a concept. But that's what I use. They're, I I don't want to say 50 gallons, maybe 10 to 20 gallon buckets, I guess. And they just sit outside, but I'm not going to keep those up in the winter time because it's just too much work. And then the stock tank heater would definitely melt the plastic. I've actually had that happen. <laughs> I had um, a frozen bucket and we're like, oh, we'll just put it next to the heater here for a few minutes and get the ice softened up and we'll dump it out. Well, I came back not two minutes later and it was, the bucket was oozing out onto the floor. So I was like, oh, no, I can't do that anymore. And I'll, ha- I'll have to put a picture up of it because I still have that bucket. It's just too funny not to. It's kind of a warning to not put that plastic too close to a heat source. So going back to what I was saying, I'll have to hang buckets inside of the stalls. And those, you can get heated buckets. I've seen them. I think Schneider's sells them. There's multiple places you can get these things. But I'm not a big fan of them because they need to be plugged in, right? So there's a cord and horses like to chew on things. And it just makes me a little nervous that they might get electrocuted. Crazy thoughts, right? So I'm not a big fan. I just, I fill up the buckets manually and I dump them out when there's ice and I pound buckets all winter long. So it's not the best thing, but it's a solution. It works. And I know some barns have automatic heated 
waters, which would be very nice. So you're very, very lucky, and I'm jealous of you if you have them. But going back to kind of what I was saying with barn maintenance, be sure you have clean buckets. Um, it's a good time of year to scrub them out. Make sure there's not any mold on there. Make sure they don't stink because that could make your horses sick. So be sure to scrub out those buckets before it gets cold because you are not going to feel like it after it gets colder outside. So that being said, you've got blankets for your horses. This is also a good time of year to get those repaired and washed and ready for winter time. So if you live where I do in Colorado, it could be 90 degrees today and then tomorrow we have a blizzard coming. That's just our weather. So you always have to be a step ahead of the weather and be prepared. Um, stock up on hay, guys. Um, it's easier now to get it and especially because we're probably in the third cutting or getting very, very close to it. Stock up so you don't have to do it this winter time. Same with grain and shavings if you're into that sort of thing. Um, I, I don't change my feeding schedule in the winter time. I try to keep it very consistent with the time change coming up. I just adjust an hour. I don't try, I don't like ease them into it. I just feed either uh, an hour earlier in the fall or an hour later in the spring. So they just, they get used to it. They kind of get the weird side glances in the springtime because they're like, you're late. You are an hour late. And it takes about a week and they're over it. However, in the fall, they're just still sleepy and going, oh, oh my gosh, you're out here early. What a nice surprise. And then I'm the hero in the fall. So <laughs> it just depends. And um, going back, you've got horse blankets are ready to go. You've got the lighting situation figured out. You've got the buckets clean. You're stocked up on hay. So those are the four main things that you want to focus on before winter time. Um, and if you're a, if you're a car enthusiast like I am, you, we're starting to think about snow tires. I I don't know if that's a concern for trucks or not. If you just have all seasons, but I won't I won't get into that. And if you're like me, winter means I cannot ride outside because either the ground is frozen, or there's snow on it, which is too slippery for the horses. So I have to ride inside in my indoor. I'm very very grateful that I do have an indoor arena that I can use in the winter time. It is small, but it allows me to get the job done when it's windy or raining or snowing, etc, etc. So one thing to keep in mind with those indoor arenas, if you have one, or even if you're going to haul over to your buddy's house and use theirs, they get really dusty if you don't have the correct ground. And you can see that in a couple of my videos. So what I would recommend is getting into a routine of allowing time to water down those arenas. Um, and if you keep doing it every day, it accumulates and it gets better and better. It's just like anything you maintain. It just gets better the more you maintain it. So I don't know about you guys, but I get really sick when I breathe too much of that dust. I know it's not good for me. It makes my head hurt and I just, my lungs are just feel like they're full of sand. So it's, imagine your health versus the horse's health. So it's not just for you, it's for the health of the horse as well. So if you need to get a longer hose, if you need to get a new hose because your other one's just cracked and it's not working well, kind of like mine. Yeah, so I would recommend making sure your arena situation is up to snuff. And this is a good time to work those arenas, kind of clean them up before, again, the weather gets too cold and you don't want to be outside. Um, another hint, gloves. I like those little uh, cotton gloves because I don't lose too much dexterity with those and winter winter clothing. I mean, we're all a little bit different. We like to dress differently for winter, but make sure that's all ready to go and you have your barn gear clean and set aside for when the weather does start to turn bad. But as far as riding in the colder temperatures, that is a personal decision. I can talk until I'm blue in the face, but we all have our different criteria of weather that's too bad to ride in. So for example, I do have an indoor arena, and so the only way I won't ride is if it's below 10 degrees. I know that sounds insane, but 
at 10 degrees, the air is so cold it hurts my lungs, which in turn I feel like would hurt their lungs in a when they're breathing hard and working. So I, I, for safety reasons, I just don't feel like it's a good idea below that. Anything above that, I'm out there because I'm out of the rain, the snow, and the wind. And it's not too bad once you get moving around. On the opposite end of that, if it's above 90 degrees, I'm not out there either because again, it's too hot, too sweaty, and I don't wanna make my horses sick. So I try to keep it pretty, pretty consistent that way and it, it makes for a healthier horse. And of course, if you have a show coming up, you know, it's like, oh shoot, it's gonna be zero degrees every single day before the show. I need to do something about this. Well, I mean, you could haul somewhere or you could tough it out and just not work quite as hard as you normally would because, you know, breathing hard, you want that cold air hitting the lungs and shocking it. That's my theory, not scientific fact. Um, speaking of shows, I winter shows, man. I could talk about that. They are interesting, and especially if you're in Colorado, like I've said, because you could have really nice weather up until the day you leave, and you could have rain, and you're loading stuff in the rain or the snow, and driving conditions could be kind of sketchy. So <laughs> you always have to be prepared to say, hold on now. I don't think the show is worth it. But again, if you're hauling for high points or all around, Again, that's something you discuss with your trainer, and I'm not going to tell you yay or nay on that situation. Um, but yeah, that's basically getting ready for winter. I may have missed something, and I'll think of it as soon as I stop recording, but that's the nature of the beast. So just remember these things, and if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be glad to elaborate on anything, or I'd like to, t if, you, if I miss something, tell me. Put it in the comments below, because I want to know. And I would love to share ideas and knowledge with you guys because I'm always willing to learn. And if you, again, have any questions, ask away. I'm very open and I'm very friendly. So thanks guys for listening and I hope you have a good one. <laughs>